Welcome to hour number three of the big broadcast, coast to coast and border to border all over the World Wide Web and on 50 plus stations throughout the U.S. and Canada. iHeartRadio, TuneIn app, radio loyalty, all that is available. Plus, we're live 2 to 5 Central, 3 to 6 Eastern, 12 to 3 Pacific at JiggyJaguar.com. 24 7 stream. It's called Jiggy Instant Replay. I ran out. My music ran out in the next. Doesn't matter. Uh. <laughs> Jiggy Jag Instant Replay is available over there at JiggyJagWire.com. 267-22-J-I-G-G-Y. Now, um, I was going to talk about... What the hell was I going to talk about? I am going to talk about something. But this story popped out at me, and I had to talk about this because once again we got some corruption, as the grease man would say. Hey, what a doodle They got the corruption over there, eh? They got a corruption, and a corruption born to Ray Martinez. This comes from Alternet.org. The government bribes police to arrest people for smoking pot. What? Stop the presses. Activists have long claimed that cops have quotas for ticketing and arresting people, but evidence to support these claims varies from state to state. However, newly obtained documents reveal that local police agencies have indeed used the number of low-level drug arrests to sustain critical law enforcement funding from the federal government under a program called the Edward Bryan Memorial Justice Assistance Grant, or JAG, program. I blame myself. You may have heard of the Bryan Grant, a program for... From uh, Michelle Alexander's book, The New Jim Crow, Alexander writes, The Bryan program was designed to encourage every federal grant recipient to help fight the war on drugs. Millions of dollars in federal aid have been offered to state and local law enforcement agencies willing to wage the war. Scholars say the program has had a major impact on the precocious rise of low-level drug arrests over the last 20 years. This money has helped reshape policing strategies and policies in major cities and a lot of rural areas throughout the United States. Says Harry Levine, a sociologist at Queens College, CUNY, who has studied drug policy for decades. The performance measures are universal across all states and have not changed in the program's 26-year existence. And here's what they are, taken directly from the report. Number of offenses arrested, number of offenders prosecuted, a number of of drug seizures. Marijuana-related arrests and seizures are by far the most common productivity measure. (laughs) Marijuana, methamphetamine, crack, cocaine, heroin, heroin, LSD, PCP, ecstasy, um... Basically, all these, all these, uh, marijuana in 2010 led the list at 177,414. In 2011, uh, 232,006. And in Wow. Wow. They discovered that the simple possession of marijuana is overall among all states examined the most frequent arrest and conviction cited as a productivity measure. Marijuana is 42% in 2013. Other illicit drugs rank at 16. Heroin at 7%. And methamphetamines and uh, amp, I guess, not the not the drink. Twenty six percent in cocaine, nine percent. Now look at this study in the eighties, and you probably find out there's a lot more. Culling together data from the Brian Grant State Annual Reports in a 2013 ACLU report called "Marijuana Arrests in Black and White" reveals an ugly reality about the war on drugs. Um, since 1995, it's gone steadily up. It was 500,000 
and uh, marijuana possession in got up to uh, almost in 2010 almost 825,000 marijuana possession arrests in 2010 28% among 20 to 24 and uh, police use the Brian Grant's funds for officer payroll. No, that's not shocking. Now, uh, recently they decriminalized, or they've told police, you know, don't don't pick people up for pot. It's stupid. At some stage of the game, most of that's going to be out the door. Who knows? It, it'll it'll be interesting to see as things go uh, things go about the world. Um, we've got IQ Hour Zoli coming up. He will be with us in our uh, last two segments. We're going to talk to him in our thirty minute our our um, thirty minutes after the hour. We're going to talk to him about uh, D Day and. Um, talk about all the various things surrounding D-Day, and then 45, we'll catch up on some of the stories, uh, big story today, Iraq, um, <laughs> Al-Qaeda, the boys are taking it back over, that whole thing really worked, <laughs> so we'll talk about that as well as some other things, stay tuned, we've got more, here on a big broadcast. 